Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. You can overcome whatever it is you may be dealing with today, even if it's gone on for a long time, and if it seems like maybe you've tried different things and, and it didn't work, well, one word from the Lord yes. will change everything. Hallelujah. When you do what He shows you to do, it works. So uh, turn off everything for a few minutes. Give this your full attention. Get your Bible, something to make a note with. Come into the classroom with us and receive. Father, all of us agree together is touching these things, asking you for utterance, anointing, ears and hearts that can hear, and exactly answers for now what you know we need, and that which we've not seen revealed to us, that which we've not understood, uh, make us to understand, we pray, Lord, and we'll give you the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you would look in uh, Genesis, the 17th chapter with us again, we're in uh, progressively into our series that we're calling Faith for Provision. And what we're doing is giving one by one 30 different biblical scriptural reasons why we are sure it is always God's will for us, His people, to have abundant provision. Always His will. Abundant provision. Based on what, see? If you say, well, I just don't know about that. Well, what is your belief based on? You say, I just don't know about that. It's not always that way. Based on what? Don't base your beliefs on experience or lack of experience, or somebody else's experience, <laughs> or theories, there's only one sure, rock-solid foundation yes, to build your life on, yes, and that is, thus saith the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is written. You know, when Jesus was attacked, tempted by the enemy uh, intensely, 40 days and 40 nights, did he overcome? Yes. How? How did he overcome? He didn't say, well, you know, down at our synagogue they preach. No, he didn't say, well, I, you know, mama and them always thought this. No. What, every, every point, what did he combat the lies, the confusion, the deception with? It is written. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you say it is written... You're done talking. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. There's nothing else to discuss. There's nothing else to debate. Why? Because God's right. Yes, sir. What he said is right. Yes. It is eternal, unchanging, perfect truth. Mm -hmm. And that truth will make you free. Yes, so we've, we're down now uh, several reasons into that list. Our first reason was the Lord is my shepherd. The second one was uh, the goodness of God. The third one is the fatherhood of God. The fourth one is the creation of God. The fifth is God's will in heaven. And the sixth is the God of Abraham. Now, if you haven't been with us for those, the, I mean, it, we went into a lot of scriptures, and a lot of things. Go online to faithschool.org. And all of these previous lessons are there, hundreds of them, and there's no charge, no cost. You don't have to sign up for anything or commit to anything. Uh, our partners, uh, by the Lord's grace, have underwritten these things and paid for them. Take advantage of it. Feed on it. And what we're, what we're doing now, you'll get even more out of it when you've heard that. Talking about the God of Abraham, what we saw was Abraham knew a God who made him rich. If Abraham was here today, and you could ask him, well now, but Abraham, isn't it sometimes God's will for people to do without? 
so they can learn things? Isn't it God's will for people to, some people to be born into poverty and, and some people to just all their life live in destitute circumstances? Isn't that sometimes the way, the will of God? Uh, what would he say? Would he say, well, I knew a God who made me rich, right? Who delivered me, who protected me, who healed us, who restored us, who gave us miracles and made me very rich. <laughs> Well, has God changed? No. Does he want to do something different now? And what we saw was that it was through covenant and through blessing. Look with me in Genesis 17 again. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram. Now, let's just stop right here. You know... If you're past 65, can you still look forward to great things yes. happening in your yes. life? Yes. Or 75? Or, yes. or 99? Yes. Huh? I mean, some of the greatest things that ever happened in Abram's life was after he was 99. Oh. Right? Yes. So, don't get into coast mode. Anybody know what I mean by that? Yes, well, I've worked, I've done this, we've had family, you know, and I'm just, you know, won't be too long. I'll just coast till I die. No, wake up. God's a big God. He's got things going for you. Don't be spiritually lazy. Hmm? You're not done with what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord till you're out of here. To this life is over. You're supposed to be involved in things every day. So find out what they are. He said, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me. Be perfect. I'll make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. In verse 7, he said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God to you and to your seed after you. So this covenant and this blessing was not to end with Abraham and his life. And what we saw studying uh, yesterday's lesson was what happened with his son Isaac. I mean, we, it, it sounds like you're reading about Abraham. Right? When you're reading about what happened with Isaac, God told uh, Abraham, leave this place and go to this place and I'll bless you. And oh, did he. He was very rich. Next thing you know with Isaac, he's telling him a similar thing. Don't go there. Stay here. Sow here and I'll bless you. And he reaped a hundredfold yes. in the same year, in the middle of hard times. Famine when nobody else is having a crop. Not only did he have a crop, he talked about a bumper crop. He had a hundredfold harvest. And, and what happened, why that happened, was the blessing. Now let's go on to the, the next generation, and that would be with Jacob. And look over to the 28th chapter of Genesis. Because he had said... Uh, I'm establishing this between me and you and your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant. In the 28th chapter of Genesis, we see the third generation. And you know, one reason I'm, I'm doing this is because how many times did God say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He, he said this many times, many times. Why? You know, if God says something one time, it's important. Right? right? Yes. Life changing. If he says it 12 times, what should you do? You should go, we better be paying attention to this. Right? Something's big is here. Right? Why do I need to know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Does that matter to me? Yes. Are you the seed of Abraham? Yes. Come on, are y'all listening? Yes. Because Isaac is the seed of Abraham, and Jacob is the seed of Abraham. And that's what he's saying. And in the 28th chapter, Jacob, even though, you know, he made a lot of mistakes, and, you know, the Bible is wonderful. It doesn't color things or shade things. If they messed up, it tells you they messed up, and it doesn't make excuses for it. 
But praise God, even though people messed up, there's still salvation stories and restoration stories of being used and best blessed greatly after big mistakes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gives us hope too, huh? Yes, sir. So uh, um, Jacob basically had to leave home and his brother wants to kill him over what he did, you know, with the uh, blessing and right of the firstborn and that kind of thing. And in chapter 28, he's out by himself out in the countryside. Verse 11, he lighted upon a certain place, tarried there all night, and the sun was set, and he took stones of that place, put them for pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. Genesis 28, 12 now. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Now let's just stop right there. Why would he start with that? Because Jacob knew what God did for his grandfather. Right? Abram. Abraham. And he knew what God did for his father Isaac. They were multi-billionaires. And not just that. They had been protected. They had been spared. They had been healed. They had been restored. They had been delivered. They had gotten miracles. So when he says, I'm the God of your daddy... What does that immediately say to him? Huh? What happened for daddy can happen for me. Is that right? Why is he telling him that? And well, he goes, he says that very thing. Uh, the land whereon you're laying, to you I will give it and to your seed. And your seed will be as the dust of the earth. Now this is a good word because he, for all he knows, a bear might get him tonight. He's out there in the wilderness by himself. And, you know, in those days, man, wild animals were everywhere, you know, and a lion or whatever. And, and, uh, and to know that you're going to have some kids is good news. <laughs> is that right? And a lot of them, he ain't even married yet, you know. He ain't even made it to his uncle's house. And so he said, you'll spread abroad to the west and east and north and south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be Blessed. And behold, I am with you and will keep you in all places, whether you go and I'll bring you again to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you of. Praise God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't you think he needed to hear that right now? Yes, sir. He, he's had to run away from home and he's out there by himself. He, doesn't, he has no idea what he may do with his life or what might work or even if he makes it on this journey. Verse 20, and Jacob vowed a vow and he said, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and of course that's what he told him he would do, and will give me bread to eat and clothes to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord will be my God. You know, at some point, you got to get past daddy's God. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Grandpa's God. My pastor's God. Yes. My church is God. No, he's got to be my God. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Not just somebody you know vicariously through somebody else. You talk about their stories. You talk about their testimonies. No, you need your own testimonies. Yes. Is that right? You yes. need your own miracles. Yes. Your own. You're supposed to have your own. He said, God will be my God. And you know, uh, who, who, are, who are we reading about today? A at the time this happened, the reference was not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was the God of Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right? Right? right. right? Uh -huh. And now who are we talking about? <laughs> God of Abraham. Isaac and, and Jacob. Because yes, it happened. He, he was his God and he is his God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give the tenth to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tithing. Yes. Well, where'd that come from? Why'd that come up? Somebody says, well, it's part of the law. 
The law is not going to happen for another 400 years. Uh Uh-uh. No. Where did he get this? Well, Abraham, his grandfather, tithed when there was no law. Nobody told him to do it. There was no requirement to do it. Why did he do it? Honor. Come on, can you see this? Honor. What's he saying? God's going to be my God. And and what's he saying? In response to God doing what he told him, I'll be with you, I'll bless you, I'll keep you, I'll cause you. Because, see, uh, fear was telling him, you'll never see home again. You'll never see mama again. (laughs) None of that. And God said, oh, no. No, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to get you back home. Everything's going to be fine. And he says, Lord, you do that, and you're going to be my God. Not just daddy's God and grandpa's God. You're going to be my God. And I'm going to respond in honor and tithe to you. And a tenth of everything you do for me is coming back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you read the rest of the story, he got over there. He made it to uncle's house. And uncle had some pretty daughters. (laughs) And he wound up getting married. And you know the story. But. Uncle Laban was a shrewd rascal. And, and, and Jacob kept missing to read the fine print on the contracts. <laughs> and he got him 10 times in a row. He got him where he wound up working for years and had nothing to show for it. He just kept, kept getting him, kept getting him, kept getting him until. See, what Laban forgot about is he's got a covenant. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob has a covenant. And one night he's asleep. God gives him a dream and shows him the livestock being, instead of solid colored, being speckled, straight, spotted, you know, off color and, and not solid color. And he got it. And so he, he peels him some rods and makes spots and specks and stripes. And so when the finest cows and sheep and goats are in front of the troughs and they mate and that kind of thing, he puts his rods in so they can see them. Yeah. And when, the, when the, the weak ones and the ones that are not so good, he takes his rods out. And the cows conceived and brought forth Spotted calves and striped calves. Oh man, there's so much here about vision. Huh? Doesn't matter what's in front of you. The, the vision that's in front of you. See, while they were there looking at this, it got in them. And then that's what was produced out of them. It's what was before their eyes. And the Bible said that in, in, within just a few years, he had more cows than they did. And he had the best cows. And just, have you heard this before? He had flocks and herds <laughs> and donkeys and sheep. I mean, where did we hear this before? I mean, this was, even if somebody tries to undercut you and, and, and get you and gouge you 10 times in a row, if you got the blessing working for you, you're still going to come out on top. Hallelujah. This is the ever lasting covenant, not just on Abraham, but on his seed. I want you to notice something. We, in, in Jeremiah, uh, on yesterday's class, we, we noticed this, Jeremiah 33 and 6. In that passage, the Lord talked about that he was going to procure, verse 9, so much goodness and so much prosperity on God's people that outsiders would see it and fear and tremble. But he also said this in verse 6, Jeremiah 33, 6, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them and reveal to them abundance of peace and truth. This is part of the covenant also. Go to Luke, if you would. Luke chapter 13. Our sixth reason was the God of Abraham. Our uh, seventh reason here is we are the seed of Abraham. And in Luke 13, something that happened and then what Jesus said about it is 
very enlightening along this line. Uh, there was a woman uh, where he was ministering that was bowed over. Verse 11 says she had a spirit of infirmity or weakness for 18 years and was bowed over and could in no wise lift up herself. So she was stooped over. She had some kind of a uh, frozen, stiff situation in her spine or back or whatever, and she couldn't straighten up. And she'd been that way for nearly 20 years, 18 years. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. I don't know if there was popping or cracking or I don't know what happened, but immediately, poof, up she comes straight. Woo! And glorified God. Amen. Nothing is said about her glorifying God being bent over for 18 years. But the moment she was loosed and healed, that glorified God. Right? And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. He said, there's six days which men ought to work. And them therefore come and be healed, not on the Sabbath day. So we've been talking about this. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. And work doesn't add anything to it. This wasn't work. This was the blessing. The Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite. Does not each one of you loose his, uh, on the Sabbath loose his ox or ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, give me that next phrase. Being what? Huh? Huh? How many years is this after Abraham walked on the earth? Right? This is hundreds and hundreds of years. Centuries and centuries after Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were on the earth. And now Jesus is here ministering. And he says, this woman that's been bent over like this for 18 years, she ought to be loosed. Why? Why? She ought, she ought to be straight. She ought to be free from this. Why? Because she's a daughter of Abraham whom Satan hath bound. Now see, you'll hear some people, you'll hear even preachers, ministers talking about, you know, well, God uses disease to teach us some things. Well, this wasn't God. This was Satan. I think there's a big difference between God and Satan, don't you? <laughs> Satan had bound the woman. No, friend, disease is not a blessing in disguise. Disease and sickness is not something God uses to help us and to teach us and to cultivate. Disease is bad. Sickness is bad. Healing is good. Don't call evil good. And don't call good evil. No. Any more than poverty is good. No, he said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Mm. And you know, the part of the controversy they're having is because it happened on the Sabbath day. What's the Sabbath day? The day of no work. <laughs> Come on, here, listen. No work. And see, that's what they were saying. Well, no, you can't work on the Sabbath day. You have to, you know, there are other days you can work. And, and basically, Jesus said, work. She's a daughter of Abraham, right? She's supposed to be loosed on the day of rest. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And it wasn't work that healed her. It wasn't work. It wasn't her work. It wasn't Jesus' work. It was the blessing that belonged to them all the time, whether they knew it or whether they didn't. Now, here's something to think about. Was she a daughter of Abraham for the past 18 years? Yes. Huh? Should she have been loosed 18 years ago? Every one of those 18 years, wasn't she a daughter of Abraham? Then who was binding her all those 18 years? Satan. Satan, the adversary. The thief, the killer, was doing that to her. Was that God's will? No, no it was not God's will. No. He said she's a daughter of Abraham. She's a child of Abraham. She's the seed of Abraham. What's the big deal about that? 
the seed of Abraham has a covenant with God. The seed of Abraham has the blessing of Abraham. Oh, can you say amen? Has the blessing of Abraham and that blessing and that power and that anointing healed her on that day. Whether it's healing or having food to eat or clothes to wear or being protected from danger or being restored or like Abraham and Sarah, desire of their heart for decades was to have a child. Man, it took a miracle, but God did it. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I'd take a miracle. We know somebody. Yes. Is that right? We, we know somebody that specializes in miracles. Are there any other daughters of Abraham around? Where could you find? Oh, I see hands in the classroom. <laughs> I'm looking in the camera, sons of Abraham, daughters of Abraham. You know, our little kids sing that, you know, uh, I'm of the seed of Abraham. Uh, we need our little ones learning things like yes, that, right? right? Yes. The rest of it goes, and his blessing rests on me. Yes, sir. That's not just a catchy tune. That's an eternal truth. Everlasting covenant from generation to to generation, to generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you don't have to try to track your personal genealogy to see if I have a Jewish Abrahamic ancestry. You could really get bogged up in that and maybe come up with the wrong answer. <laughs> but it's easy today. I am born of God. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, yes, who is the seed of Abraham. And guess what that makes me? The seed of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Through faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, well, our, our time's up again today. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. I'm the seed of Abraham. Go ahead and say it. I'm the seed of Abraham and his blessing rests on me and is doing the same things in my life in these days. Glory to God. It is eternal truth. Well, come back next time. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.